let's take a closer look at the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle consists of the glomerulus. The glomerulus was the capillary bed. So glomerulus contains blood and Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule is where the filtrate goes. So blood parts, plasma, flows out of the glomerulus and into Bowman's capsule. It's caught in Bowman's capsule. So let's draw this again so that it's nice and clear. And remember, how did blood get into the glomerulus? What was that? How, this is my glomerulus right here. And how did blood get in there? It came in through the afferent arteriole. And this is glomerulus. And it left via the efferent arteriole. So you're good with that? Now we have to draw Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule is a double-layered structure. You can imagine Bowman's capsule is like a balloon. And the glomerulus is a net of capillaries that were punched into the balloon. Is any part of this seeming somewhat familiar? Yes. Look at my balloon. The glomerulus is inside the balloon. The balloon wraps around the glomerulus that punched inside it. And then still contains the air that was in the balloon in the first place. What? Yeah. You actually have a visceral layer and a parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. And let's make sure we have our terminology. Hmm. That's exactly what it's called. You tell me. My little stick pointer is on the parietal. Parietal layer of Bowman's capsule. And now my little stick is on the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. The visceral layer of Bowman's capsule is unique. It's actually a group of cells that are smashed on the capillary bed. And they have these really unique characteristics. The capillaries are really unique. They have these slits in them, so they're super leaky capillaries, which is very unusual. And then, the, per, the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule has these parts of the cells that kind of like these little fingers that come out and interdigitate and create this sieve, like a, a filtering system. Well, that's exactly what it is. It is a filtering system. Like remember when you were a kid and you'd go to the beach and you'd have that little tray with all the holes in it? What is that thing? It's a filter but you'd like throw the sand from the beach in it and then you shake it all out and you find seashells and crabs and who knows what other cool things you find in there. That's what I'm thinking about. But I want to show you a picture, someone else's picture. This is also from the OpenStax textbook. Dude, those guys are phenomenal. But look at this thing. You can see here it's blood. Here's my efferent arteriole. Here's my afferent arteriole. The blood comes in. And look at how the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule is like smashed onto the capillaries themselves. The capillaries are a knot. This is just so nice how it's, it's shown. The parietal layer of Bowman's capsule is, what kind of tissue is that? It's simple squamous epithelium. And look at the space in between there. That's the capsular space. That's actually a, a, an actual, it's not a, a potential space. It's an actual space where the filtrate gathers. And then look at who's this. This is proximal convoluted tubule. So once the fluid comes out, it's going to go into this tubule, and now it's going to be in there to do its thing. This. I know it looks familiar because we looked at this thing on day 
two in this class, and this is day 22. Holy crud. Time flies when you're having fun. So 20 classes ago, we actually looked at this slide, and we looked at the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule as our example of simple squamous epithelium. Oh, this is so fun. All right, so I think, did I label everything capsular space? Ah, uh, I didn't. I wanted to tell you that the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule, the cells that make up that visceral layer, they're called podocytes. And I think of pod, foot, toes, and these are like little toes that are sticking out here. So these are podocytes. And then what else? That's it. Okay. Now we get to look at three parts, the histology of three parts of our um, kidney because we can actually tell nephron parts when looking in at our kidney slide. So let's get started on 